Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a very eventful weekend. So I'm doing the second show on here. Here's the thing. Oil production in the world has just been slashed by roughly around 6 million barrels per day this weekend. Now, you probably want to know what effect this is going to have on, on you guys, on everybody out there, the general population here in the United States and in Canada. And that's what I'm going to get to. I've been doing research, and specifically, is there any precedent-setting cases of this happening before where oil production has been slashed? And why is this such a such a bad thing if oil production gets slashed? And what happens, and what's the effect going to be on you guys? Well, back in 1973, there is precedent for it happening, but it happened... Uh, not in the, under the same circumstances as it's happening this time, but oil production got slashed by Saudi Arabia and the OPEC countries in an embargo. But it had a similar effect upon the markets. So we're going to discuss that. And the uh, first thing I'm going to get to is I'm going to try to explain how the world uses an exact amount of oil each and every day. Now, it uses about 80 million barrels of oil each and every day. Now, there's a funny thing about this. If they produce more than the 80, 80 million barrels a day of oil that the world uses, then what happens is, is there's a buildup of inventory. The big tanks that they hold it in start to overfill and overflow, and then what happens then is the oil price drops drastically. Now, we saw this happen a few years ago when the United States became the big oil producer. It was produced around 14 or 15 million barrels a day right now. But as they were increasing their oil production through shale, shale oil drilling, a few years ago, what happened was is that new oil coming online over exceeded what the world's using by a little bit, like maybe a million barrels a day, over. And what happens if you produce too much is the tanks all fill up. They fill up all the ships and all the super tankers and all the tanks they have in the refineries. And they fill everything up with oil. When everything gets up full up with oil, then what do you do with all the extra oil? Well, prices just fall. And that's what happened. The oil price fell. And that was that big, remember, that big fall in the price of oil at the pumps and everything that we went through a year or two ago? And, and, uh, and there was a big glut of oil, and, and the price went all the way down for crude, down to $29 during that period of time. Well, the opposite of that, when they don't, the world doesn't produce quite enough oil every day, the exact opposite happens. Tanks that, where they put the oil start to empty. Now, this is a huge shock, what we just had. A 6 million barrel per day cut to oil production means that we're going to have a shortfall each and every day of 6 million barrels. It's going to have to come out of those tanks and stuff where they've been holding oil, stored oil, to make up for the shortfall. Because nobody in the, one in the world, no country, the United States or Canada or any of these other countries wants to do without. Who's going to do without? What country are they going to say, okay, we're not going to take, we're not going to give you any oil. Big, big, long lineups at the pumps, and we run on oil. This world runs on oil. Oil is everything. It makes all of our products. It gets all of our packaging and stuff to the stores. It runs all of our machinery. Everything runs on oil. So with that said, we're going to have a shortfall now of six million barrels per day. Now that doesn't sound like much, but most of the oil we consume is all fresh right out of the ground. Runs through the refinery and bing -a bang -a boom -ba, it ends up in your tank in your car for gasoline. With this shortfall, what's going to happen is, is they're going to have to take this out of storage. 
And it's going to soon, at 6 million barrels per day, it's going to soon start emptying those tanks. If that lasts too long, if the situation escalates, which very well could, guys, listen, this could very well spin out of control, this situation. And we could get bigger cuts to the oil supply than we have now. This very well could happen. But let's just, for argument's sake, say that we're, that it's going to take weeks now for this 6 million barrels per day to come back online again. And during this period in time, I'm expecting the oil price to shoot upwards. Now, now I'm going to get back to the point about what happened in 1973 during the oil embargo. That's what I'm going to talk about now. What effect did it have on the markets? What effect did it have on the stock markets? And the effect that it had was, is oil price shot up like the price at the pumps all across America, the price shot up like four times higher, you know, and, 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 it, and it was hard to get. Gas was hard to get. I remember when I was a little kid seeing a big long lineup, some people waiting, waiting out in the hot sun just to get some gas in their car. 1973. I was just a kid. That was the last time this happened, and it was a controlled thing. OPEC was controlling it. But I remember the big long lineups. So that's one effect. One effect is if this gets worse, if the situation escalates. Could see big long lineups at the gas pumps. And when you do get there finally to fill your car, you're facing gas that's doubled in price. Or even tr if this if this escalates, it could even be triple in price from what it is now. When you finally get your car to the pump. My suggestion now for you guys out in my audience is go in and fill all your cars up with gas. <laughs> That's this weekend because I cannot see the gas price falling this week all I can see it doing is going up 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 every day this week at the pump up like 15 cents every day higher all week long and there could actually if this continues for any length of time there could actually be shortages where, where, where you have to wait in a big long lineup now, I don't think that's going to happen right away. I think this situation would have to continue for a number of weeks before we get to the big long lineup part. But what you're going to see this week is every single day, the gas is going to go up a few pennies higher. Higher, higher. So fill up your cars this weekend. I would if I was you guys. But the next effect from my studying is, is the effect it had on the stock market during the oil embargo of 1973. Between 1973 and 1974, the stock market fell 50%. 50%, a big 5-0% during that period in time. Now, can you imagine... We're already on the leading edge of a recession right now. Can you imagine if the stock market falls 50%? What is it, 27,000 or something like that? Something ungodly number? It's so high right now. 50% would take it down like, what? <laughs> 14,000 or lower. Talk about losing a lot of money in the stock market. But you know investors right now, they've been pulling out like, I think it's like $800 million a day has been coming out of the stock market all month long by, by investors that have been pulling money. They're already pulling. They're pulling, the, they're pulling themselves out of the stock market. But the stock market's not really falling. Uh, the question is, if they're pulling all that money out of the stock market, why isn't the stock market falling? You know? <laughs> I don't know. So maybe there's other money coming in that we don't know about. But anyway, what happened after 1973 into 1974 was a drop of 50% of the stock market was the effect of the oil embargo. Now, we're heading in this week. This is going to be one turbulent week. Monday 
Well, I'm watching the markets very carefully on Monday. There's going to be a lot of turbulence this week. I'm not exactly sure what's going to go in what direction. Because this is like, right now, a black swan just happened this weekend. Right here. And we're going to have to wait and see what the effects... I'm kind of excited. I'm kind of excited to see what the markets are going to do tomorrow. I'm kind of excited to wait until gold opens up later this afternoon, silver, and see where they move. I'm very interested in this. Very excited to watch. Listen, thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye-bye.